A huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. As the holidays come to a close, it is a great time to treat yourself or a loved one to a beautiful and sustainable piece of jewelry. And Ana Luisa makes that really easy, especially right now when they're having one of the biggest sales of the year. Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that believes that sustainable and ethical luxury should be accessible for everyone. They use recycled materials and conflict-free diamonds in their designs, and they are radically transparent and traceable within their supply chain. They have a huge variety of stunning and timeless pieces that are intuitive and thoughtful that are designed to be simple pleasures for every day. And each piece goes through rigorous testing to make sure that their metals are always safe, nickel-free, hypoallergenic. And they also use a combination of different tests to ensure that all of their pieces are life-proof. And this means that I can sleep, shower, and live in my jewelry without worrying that it will tarnish or become discolored. And it also means that I can purchase earrings for my five-year-old daughter and not fear that her ears are going to turn green or get infected. In addition to being sustainable and ethical and beautiful, the jewelry from Ana Luisa is designed to make you feel beautiful and confident. And there is something so special about wearing a piece of jewelry that makes you feel good about yourself. My most worn jewelry in 2022 has been these earrings and this bracelet, which I just love. I feel so classy and elegant every time I put them on, no matter what I'm wearing. I wear them dressed up for work or for special occasions, or like today with just a hoodie and jeans. And because they're so classic and timeless, these pieces work with everything in my closet. My self-confidence is boosted when I add a touch of elegance to my outfit, and I feel more put together, and it's so easy to do. So if you're looking for a meaningful and beautiful gift for yourself or a loved one, check out Ana Luisa. Not only will you be supporting a sustainable and ethical brand and our channel, but you'll also be investing in a timeless piece of jewelry that you'll treasure for years to come. So make sure you check out the links that I'll leave in the pinned comment and in the description box. Make sure you use my code Yovi's Home 20 for 20% off. Thank you, Ana Luisa, once again for sponsoring this video. And now on to the main event. Hi, welcome to Yovi's Home. Today we're gonna do a little bit of a different video, a little bit of a fun thing. I thought it would be really fun uh, to say like, if I was the US president for a day, these are all the laws that I would change. Now, before you come at me in the comments telling me that that's not how democracy works and that's not how the system works, I know, okay? This is a fun video. This is just like, that's just what I'm calling this video if I was president for a day. But basically, these are the laws that I would like to see changed in the United States. And if I had a magic wand or if I was a dictator, I don't know, this is what I would change. This is how, this is like Yovi's politics. <laughs> so if that sounds good to you, then why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I am really glad you're here. I still have bronchitis. Uh, so if you hear my voice like this, it's not the microphone, it's, it's me. I'm, I'm sick. Okay. Let's, let's, that's enough. So the first law that I would change is I would abolish the death penalty. Okay. Um, I don't care how bad of a crime someone committed, killing other people is wrong. Um, so if somebody murdered somebody, it does not make it right for then a judge or a jury or a group of people to decide that now we're going to murder this other person. Like, that's that's not how it works. It doesn't cancel it out. So I would certainly abolish the death penalty. And then, in addition, we would do like a whole bunch of prison reform. There is so much wrong with the American prison system. We're not going to get into that. But the death penalty, gone and prison reform, we would treat prisoners like human beings. We would not treat them the way that we treat them now, um, which is not like human beings. So there we go. One thing changed. But um bum Number two, and these are not in order. Like, they're not in like my order of importance. They're just the order that they came out of my brain. So the next thing that we would do is we would give everybody health insurance. Health insurance for you, and for you, and for you, and you, and you, everybody, all the children, everybody gets health insurance, and it's good health insurance, you know? The kind of health insurance where you don't need to worry that you are going to bankrupt yourself or your family if you get sick, um, or if you lose your job. Um, so basically, that you know that if you get sick, you will get care. And that's, I think, that's, that's the bottom line. That's what we need. So there you go. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. 
health insurance for everyone. Ooh, number three. This is one, I'm really curious, Does is there any country in the world that has this? Because I feel like we should. I want to abolish fundraising entirely for politicians. Not just presidential candidates, but all candidates. So basically what I think should happen is that from taxpayer money, there should be like a fund. So if somebody wants to run, whatever, for president, let's say, um, that out of taxpayer money, every person who's running for president gets the same amount of money, $50,000, whatever, I don't care how much it is, but that everybody gets the same amount. And then with that amount of money, you run your campaign. Um, and that like private companies or private individuals, they would not be allowed to donate. Like, no, everybody has the same amount and they, that's, that's how the game works. Um, I believe this would be helpful for so many reasons because if you're constantly fundraising for your political career and companies or specific industries are supporting you, I don't know, let's say the oil and gas industry is putting money into your campaign. How the hell can you be representing the interests of the people, especially if they are in contradiction with the people who have paid for you to get to your job? The whole system is inherently corrupt as a result, in my opinion. Nobody really can be trusted because where is your loyalty at the end of the day? Is it to the people or is it to your funders? So for this reason, we abolish it. And you know what, while we're abolishing political stuff, we abolish the two-party system. We need more than just two parties to represent um, people's needs and people's interests and wishes. And when you only have a two-party system, you get these deadlocks like what we have now and these constant competitions over which party is right or which party is wrong. And that's just, that's not helpful. Like, what are you actually achieving? You guys are just constantly fighting with each other and not fighting for us. So that's it. More political parties, more choices, and level playing field in terms of political campaign money. Um, that would be the new law. We already talked about giving health insurance to everyone. Well, now what we are gonna give also is maternity and paternity and parental leave to all people that need that. Um, and we give everybody sick leave so that if you get sick, you, you don't lose your job. We would abolish gun laws. I mean, <laughs> we would abolish. There are no gun laws. Um, no. So. As of today, my one day in office, my presidency day, uh, all guns are gone. We need to get rid of guns. We're going to revise that amendment in the Constitution that gives you the right to bear arms. We are going to take that away because the right to safety and security and actually living a free life is now being um, impeded by the right for all these people to have guns. I think that the right to be able to go to school and not die is much more important than some person being allowed to have as many guns as they want. Next thing that we're gonna abolish, we are going to abolish the Electoral College. We are going to have a voting system for the president that is one person, one vote. And we're not gonna count by state. We are not gonna count by county or by any of these districting things. No, 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 no. Whoever gets more votes from the entire country becomes the president. Now the backside. I have four more laws to change. Okay, so the next one that we would change is we would revise our tax system. The tax system would be revised to such a way where the majority of the money coming into the government is going to be coming from profits of corporations. Now, I know that if you're on the stock market and if you're an investor and all of these things, you're not going to be happy with what I'm saying. But since your money no longer gets me elected, I don't care. <laughs> because what's actually good for the majority of the people is that 
they are not the ones carrying the tax burden. No, 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 it's gonna be the corporations. So that's how that's gonna be. More money for the people, less money for the corporations, and that's how I see that. Whew. Do you know that you have to be 18 years old to buy a gun, but 21 years old to buy a bottle of beer? Did you know that? Did you know that you can buy a semi-automatic weapon before you can buy a glass of wine? What? We're gonna change that law. If you are old enough to enlist in the military, if you're old enough to go potentially lose your life fighting for your country in another country, with, if, you're, if you're old enough to buy guns and work a gun and use a gun and all of that, if you're old enough for those things, you're old enough to drink. So we're gonna lower that drinking age to 18. There is no reason that buying a beer should be considered more risky than buying a gun and therefore you need to be older to buy a beer than to buy a gun. No, we're not doing that. We're not playing those games. No, no, no. Up next, I would basically outlaw being a landlord or like an Airbnb person. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it. Basically, one person, one house. One YoV can own one home, okay? Then I cannot be going around and buying apartments and houses and stuff everywhere and then renting that out to people and jacking up the price and building my empire off of the backs of those people and basically then ensuring that people cannot buy their own home or just because I have so many of them. I feel like this last one is really gonna maybe upset some people. I hope not, but because this is just my, this is not real. Okay guys, this is fun. This is for fun. It's just a video on YouTube, but I would, I would outlaw billionaires. There's no reason. You don't need to be a billionaire. We're gonna cap it at 30 million, okay? 30 million is gonna be the most amount of money that you can have. Um, anything over that is just gonna be going back into society that's gonna, oh, into our new tax system that we made, right? So, and that's gonna be funding social programs, schools, um, other things. We're gonna have beautiful roads. We're gonna, we're gonna have nature. We're gonna protect all these things. And that's gonna be paid for out of this money. So, yeah. No more billionaires. You're done. Hi, it's Editing Yovi. Um, I just realized as I'm watching this that I did not talk about abortion. So basically we are just going to make reproductive care a part of human rights. And this is gonna be something that we cannot take away from people in the future, okay? So if you want to have an abortion, you'll be able to have a safe and secure and medical one. And if you don't want one, you don't have to have one. So if you don't believe in it, you don't have to have it. I'm not going to force you, but you're not going to be taking rights away from other people. Okay, that's it. Thank you. And I'm sorry for this uh, last minute edition. So <clears throat> that's it. <laughs> How do you guys feel about my presidency for a day or my dictatorship for a day? Um, I, <laughs> you know, fill up the comments. Let me know. What would you do if you had this power for one day? What would you change? Like, boom, boom, boom. I wanna know what are the things that bug you? What are the things that you don't like? Um, and how would you change them? In which way? So let me know. Thank you guys so, so, so much for coming over today. Thank you for spending some time with me. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Doei!